I was born in Dublin. Uh, I uh, grew up on my, spent part of my time as a child on my grandmother's farm in West Waterford in the southeast of Ireland. Um, I was sent to a boarding school, I suppose it's the Irish equivalent of, a, of a, an English public school, uh, to finish my schooling there in, on the east coast of Ireland, north of Dublin. And then I uh, started, my father was a surveyor and wanted me to train as a chartered surveyor. And I was very unhappy with that. Um, well, I wasn't interested in the work. And, uh, and I came here. And the first full time job that I was offered was with a local newspaper in the southeast of Ireland with the Wexford people. And I went back there and I lived there for a few years. And when I was offered that job, shortly afterwards I was offered a job with the Litchfield Mercury, but it was too soon. To, to move. I felt I had an obligation to the newspaper that gave me my first start-up job and so I stayed there for a few years. I'm now living about, uh, I suppose about five minutes drive from the house I was born in. Uh, I was born in South Dublin uh, between a synagogue and a laundry and across from a cinema. Um, because it was across the street from a cinema that synagogue was known as the Cinemagogue in a Dublin accent and um, my, my parents and my uh, foster parents lived within walking distance of it and so that and Litchfield are probably two home places for me. I first came to Litchfield because of the family connections with, with Litchfield. I, I was aware of the whole family story that the Cumberfords in Ireland were descended from the Cumberfords of Cumberford, which is east of Litchfield and north of Tamworth. And I wanted to see that for myself. My great-grandfather had come here as well, oh, 70 years before me, and had visited Litchfield and Tamworth and Cumberford when the Peel family was living there, and Wensbury, where there were family interests as well. And I, I came here wanting to see that for myself. And the Cumberford family connections with Litchfield go right back to the 13th or the 14th century. Uh, John Cumberford of, of Cumberford Village was one of the early people to make a bequest to the friary in Litchfield. And four generations of the family were members of the guild. In the late medieval period, uh, the guild in Litchfield was the equivalent of being the city government or the, uh, or the council. And the master of the guild was the equivalent of being the mayor of Litchfield. And so four generations of the family were members of the guild and one member of the family was master of the guild or mayor of Litchfield. And one member of the family was, was a woman who was admitted to membership of the guild, which is, which is almost unique. It, it, it's rare it happens, but it, it, Isabel had so much money and political power and such a strong voice, obviously she could not be left out of politics at the time. Remember, this is 500 years before women get the vote in England. And she was married to Richard Cumberford, who was a judge and who um, was able to stand on his own two feet. And Richard is supposedly the ancestor of the family. And although that's not quite true, the relationship between the two families is one of kinship that is rather like adoption, so the families continue to erect monuments over each other's graves and use the same coat of arms and claim each other as being kin, and that goes right through into the 18th and the 19th century. Uh, there was one interesting character, being a, an Anglican priest, I'm fascinated that uh, I had a, a member of the family here called Henry Cumberford, who was precentor of Litchfield Cathedral, and who in the 1550s uh, lost his job for what was then described as lewd preaching. It doesn't sound as... Uh, it sounds better than it actually was because in fact what he was uh, deprived of his office for was that he was a recusant, that he remained a Roman Catholic right throughout the Reformation. He was safe during the reign of Queen Mary but when Elizabeth came into office he was removed. But he was given a very nice jail sentence. He was told that he could come back to this area for six weeks, twice a year. I think prisoners must have been very envious of that sort of treatment. And he died at the age of 80, so he wasn't suffering much hardship. And then when my great-grandfather came back here, he, he found a very warm welcome from the Peel family. 
in Cumberford Hall, but we know from his description of his visit there what, what year he actually came here. I have a sneaking suspicion, although he was a very radical trade unionist and sat on the left of politics, that he might have sneakingly liked to have been able to re reclaim the title of Lord of the Manor of Cumberford, but, um, and he used the coat of arms as such, but, um, well, I'm, I'm glad his politics got the better of that. <laughs>